Hello and welcome back to the next episode in the Quickfire tutorial series. Today we'll be doing a follow-up on the terraforming, how to get a uh, colony to colony cost zero. In this episode we'll be going over planetary terrain, uh, a few more things about gases and how they specifically work, um, as well as um, what you're going to be looking for in terms uh, of colonization to try and colonize other worlds and the benefits for different terrain types. So the first thing we're going to talk about is um, what is planetary terrain. So every single world, including Earth, including Mars, well, not including Mars because it's not really got anything, including Luna, um, including various other worlds. And I'll bring it up here so that you can see um, if we just, yeah, if we just bring it up. Um, and you can see here that... If we go to this is another system. If we go to here, you can see that this is a temperate forest. These will be classified as barren, as in they don't have any dominant terrain type. Um, and then you have a mountain world on Io. Each planetary terrain type affects uh, the world in different ways. So a barren doesn't affect it in pretty much any type of way. It just gives it normal to hit, normal to whatever. Um, other kinds of worlds give different benefits. Um, any any system that is below, or any system body that is with a temperature lower than 100 degrees Celsius or higher than 200 degrees Celsius with no atmosphere or atmosphere greater than 10 atmospheres will be barren. So keep that in mind. Unless it has a platelet or extreme tectonics, in which case it will be a mountain. So that is why Io is a mountain and Mars is not a mountain. Terraforming, uh, or terraforming in terms of mountains works in that all other system bodies uh, will check the following table to determine which terrain types are eligible based on environmental conditions. One of the eligible terrain types will be selected randomly. So barren, mountain and rift valley, which are base types available without any atmospheric temperature or water requirements will only be selected if no other terrain types are eligible. The tectonic numbers are internal to Aurora, so I don't believe you can see them, and have the following values, dead equal 1, hotspot equal 2, plastic equal 3, plate tectonics equal 4, platelet tectonic equal 5, and extreme equal 6. I will be putting on screen uh, the current uh, Steve's the change log and the writing minder and each individual thing, but suffice it to say, that the fortification modifiers base that you get from each different uh, type of terrain. So you're much better at fortifying a mountain than you are fortifying a barren dead rock, for example. Um, and this increases your fortification by 3x or 6x, etc. And it also uh, affects ground cover in many other ways and other environmental conditions. Now, terraforming will change the terrain under two circumstances. A planet with a base type, barren, mountain, or rift valley, becomes eligible for another terrain of a similar type. Mountain can move to any other mountain type, rift valley can move to any other rift valley type, and barren can move to any non-mountain, non-rift valley type. The terrain type is no longer possible with the current environmental conditions. A new terrain type is generated with the same base type. So that is the dependence on how you will change the terrain. So I'll post that on screen right now. And then I'm also going to put on screen um, the how the terrain table um, in terms of what each terrain does. So to explain it really quickly, fortification modifier um, works in that if you have an infantry and it's got a self fortification of three, let's say, or max fortification of six, let's say max fortification of six, it will then multiply it by the fortification modifier of that terrain that the planet is a part of. For barren, that's one, so it won't multiply it. For uh, you know, forested mountains, uh, it will do that by two point five times. So yeah, and then for uh, jungle mountain, it will times that by three, so it'll be eighteen, for example. And you can also have on deserts your fortification modifier will be reduced, for example. Um, and that is something to consider. The next is the modifier to hit. So on mountains, it's very hard to hit forces within them, uh, and the hit to hit modifier is modified accordingly. So keep that in mind. This can be very useful 
if you want to create a mountain world, or uh, a mount of jungle mountain world by terraforming a mountain uh, terrain type world, and you can put STOs on that, and they will be very hard to hit and really fortified, and it's going to be extremely hard for a opponent ship or unit to dig them out. The next uh, things are to do with minimum hydro and max hydro. So all of these things here that come after to hit modifier are to do with what you're looking for. So you can't specifically say, I want this world to be this. You have to terraform within the uh, variants of each dominant terrain type. So, and you also have to consider um, that only certain base terrain types can terraform into other terrain types, which we've gone over here just a few minutes ago. So, min hydro is the minimum hydro extent required for the terrain. So, for barren, that's zero. And then max hydro is the maximum required, which is 100. So, for deserts, they can only have 30, for example. So, you, you can't have a desert that's got 100% water on it. <laughs> um, now, there are cold deserts, and those uh, can be made out of ice sheets, etc. Next is minimum oxygen required for it. So this kind of ties into trees and tropical and stuff like that. Minimum temperature and max temperature, pretty explanatory. And then minimum tectonics and max tectonics. So based off this, you can then determine uh, specifically what you are looking for in terms of a world. So if I want to terraform Io, I know that to get a jungle mountain, I'm going to need these these parameters i'm going to play with them and move them around to be able to get the mountain i want so now that we've gone over uh planetary terrain and also um the base terrain uh, and modifiers and how you do that and what their uses is for we are going to go over gases a little bit more in depth and uh also a few other things that i want to talk about in terms of terraforming so the first thing I'm going to talk about next is going to be um, just what all gases tend to do. Um, and I'm going to put, uh, once we get over here, go to Mars here. So I'm going to put on screen right now the current uh, list of all gases in C+, and, they, and, and their toxicity levels, their boiling point levels, and also... Uh, their greenhouse effects. So the, there's different kinds of gases. Toxic gases such as chlorine and fluorine, which um, the even small amounts can cause toxic levels and cause massive casualties, while uh, you can get more inert gases like helium and neon, which don't really affect things but adjust the pressure accordingly. Then you can have methane. Uh, and carbon dioxide, and nitrogen dioxide, and sulfur dioxide, which are warming factors. You don't want to use these because these are dangerous to the uh, to the people living on the planet. Um, and then you have uh, good gases, or quote-unquote gases that you want. Um, that's water vapor, that's atesium, and free geysium for different situations. Argon is fine, stuff like that. Okay. Now that that's on screen and you have a full idea of what each gas does, you should be able to better understand um, how that works. Um, another thing I want to talk about in terms of um, terraforming is terraforming capacity and how that is specifically affected. So um, the diameter of a body effect directly affects how quick it is to terraform. So for Mars, it's 3.52 times faster to terraform on Mars than it is on Earth because it is around half the size of Earth. And for Luna, it's 13.48 times faster to terraform. Um, and you can take this into consideration across um, different planets. So for, for this planet, it's 0 0.6 uh, terraform rate versus Earth, so it's uh forty percent slower than terraforming on Earth. Okay, and uh the next thing is going to be tidal locks and population maximum capacity. So um each world will have a maximum population capacity that they can sustain with their current terraforming uh, uh like capability and capacity. So um 
the, like, if you have 100% Hydro Extent, let's say, on Tau Seti over here, which we do, and I reduce that by 50%, it's going to increase my total population capacity, so currently it's very low, at 198 million, much, much higher, okay? Uh, and also, Tidal Locked matters really, really heavy into this. So, Tidally Locked Worlds... Um, are in such a way where I believe, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to see if I can find this and put it on screen, I may not be able to find it to put it on screen, but tidally locked worlds have a certain amount of uh, negative towards population capacity. I believe it's about 80%, something around there. Um, and so that means that you generally don't want tidally locked worlds because um, that won't allow a, no a big population to be sustained on the planet. Now that we've gone through uh, planetary terrain, how to change worlds into other kinds of worlds, how uh, how to, uh, what all the gases do and how to use them, um, the differences in population capacity with tidally locked and also diameter and terraforming rate, um, you should have a decent understanding on what you need to do uh, in terms of being able to terraform effectively. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial and we're going to be going for our next tutorial very, very soon. Uh, it's currently in the works. Please like and subscribe as only about 20% of people um, actually subscribe uh, to this channel when they view it. Um, and any likes or subscriptions are duly appreciated as uh, that can get the algorithm and can help more people watch these videos so I have to answer less questions on Discord. <laughs> Thank you for watching, I've been Space Green. I hope to see you next time, uh, bye and uh, good luck terraforming out there.